Hello, my name is Ben Reardon and thank you for listening in. This is a series of audio recordings for medical and dental students, junior doctors and doctors in training on how faith in Jesus and clinical practice collide. And it's produced with the Christian Medical and Dental Fellowship of Australia, or CMDFA. And this evening we have um, the honour of having Dr Jackie Dunning with us, who's a Christian. She's the wife of Joe and mother of Joey, Letty and Shelley. And she is working at Westmead Children's Hospital in Sydney. So thank you for joining me today, Jackie. My pleasure. Um, so I've got a series of questions that I'm going to ask, if that's okay with you. So my first question tonight is, firstly, how did you become a Christian? Uh, so I grew up in a Christian family and went to church and a Christian school my entire life. And so that was a really good foundation. And then I have always said that I became a Christian or sort of completed that journey when I left home and started going to university. So I grew up in the country and moved to Melbourne for uni. And that was the first time I remember thinking that I, I could actually like not go to church if I didn't want to sort of thing. And I could have a whole new identity. And it was a defining time when I realized that, no, this was my own faith. It wasn't just something that my parents did. It was the identity that I wanted to have at university and um, church was something that I wanted to prioritise and um, I wanted my faith to influence everything that I did. Um, so I can't pinpoint an exact moment, but my first year of university was really a year of taking my Christian faith into my own hands um, and, um, yeah, making it my own. Cool. Thanks for sharing. Um, my second question is, what is CMDFA and how did you get involved with it and what does it mean to you? Um, so I got involved in CMDFA again in my first year of university. So by the grace of God, we just sort of found a number of Christians in my year level. And one of my friends um, sort of, again, um, by a, a number of different interactions ended up going to half a day of a CMDFA conference that happened to be held in Geelong that year, which is actually the impact conference and um, came back and it was like, there's this entire group of doctors and medical students and dentists from all around Australia that has a conference every year. And it's part of an organization called CMDFA. And we were like, what? That's crazy. Amazing. Um, and so I think that was the first time um, that I had uh, encountered that, that there was a, a group of people that had the same sort of goals and motivations that I did. And um, then the next year I got to go to Impact and that started my journey through CMDFA. And um, I think, yeah, through the years going to Impact and then um, continuing um, fellowship through local CMDFA chapters when I was in Victoria and then starting a CMDFA chapter in Alice Springs when I went there as a junior doctor and then having the chance to visit a few things as well now that I've moved in Sydney. I think that um, journey uh, through medicine and having CMDFA to support that all around Australia <laughs> has been really amazing. Mm, yeah, cool. Yeah, it's such an amazing fellowship um, of people, not just in Australia, but all around the world as well. Yeah, true. I guess you mentioned a few of um, different locations that you've been in your journey as a Christian throughout your um, work as a doctor. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about, I guess, your journey? Yeah, sure. Um, so I did medical school in Melbourne and when I was at medical school, I had the chance to have a scholarship to go to the Northern Territory um, every year for four years during the holidays to do a placement with the John Flynn placement program. Um, and I realised that I absolutely loved going to the Territory. And then I met my husband during medical school in Melbourne. So just had to convince him <laughs> if he wanted to um, go for a bit of adventure when I finished medical school um, and try and do something out of the box. And so um, that's how we ended up going to Alice Springs for internship and residency. And we had our first two children there as well. 
So we were there for three years. Um, and then after that, I applied for pediatric training, applied all over Australia and um, ended up getting a job in Sydney. And so for the last three years, I've been um, pursuing that at one of the children's hospitals in Sydney. Mm, cool. I guess it sounds like your life is very full, um, balancing medicine and family life and a church life and being a yeah. Christian. And I guess one of the reasons that um, we got you on today was to ask you how you balance all of those things. Um, and if you had any thoughts and suggestions for us um, as well. Yeah. Um, so sometimes I think I balance them really well and sometimes I feel like I'm not balancing them very well. And it's usually work that can um, tip the balance, I think. Um, the work is really good at, um, uh, yeah, making you a slave sometimes um, and it's not a good master to serve. And I can always feel when um, I'm getting too invested in work or um, too much time is being devoted to those things because it puts the rest of my life out of kilter. Um, and it definitely can have a negative impact upon family life and church life. And I think I was fortunate to realise that early on, like even as early back as medical school before I had a family and before I had a full-time job, um, just again, like the pressures start early on in medical school about devoting every second of your life to medicine. Um, and the temptation was there already in the first year to not prioritise going to church when you could prioritise studying instead. And just one thing that helped me when I was still a medical student was that I just made a commitment that every Sunday I was going to go to church and I wasn't actually going to even study on a Sunday. And I managed to keep that commitment up for the entire um, medical school. And that's not to be legalistic about that. There's no like um, you're not committing a grave sin if you happen to study on a Sunday. But that was one practical thing for me that helped me to um, yeah, just have that priority of, okay, I needed to make sure that church and um, keeping up fellowship with Christians was always going to be a priority. And so I think when you have things like that that you can latch onto, um, then that can shape your life as things do start to get more and more complicated um, with your life, which does happen as you get older and you have a family and, um, and then you start working full-time in medicine as well. Because if you think, like medical school is busy it just gets even worse <laughs> when you're an internship and resident and registrar and start studying for exams and everything as well um so I think that, that was the first thing that kept me accountable so making sure to prioritize church and um and having a church that also prioritized me and making sure that um like they were keeping me accountable as well um and then um, I think CMDFA also helped with that as well because when you go to um, conferences and, again, impact, um, one, you meet people from all different walks of life, um, people that are um, parents, people that have started their training, people that have finished their training, and, and you can ask them questions about how they balance things and um, what choices they've made um, to balance career and family as well and getting a different idea for what professions and um, training routes also can um, be good for family life and not so good for family life. Um, so that was also really helpful. And then I think, um, like this is probably a weird thing to say, but um, if you um, want to have a family, like you need to prioritise having a family as well, like you kind of, I mean, obviously you don't spend your whole life looking for a spouse, but you also have to make sure that medicine is not your spouse so that you are opening yourself to those opportunities. And having a spouse and having a family is great for work-life balance because as soon as I get in the door and come home, um, I am forced to compartmentalise and have to, you know, give myself to my husband and to my children compared to I know sometimes with my personality in particular, I have the tendency to like just focus in on things and I can imagine that if I didn't have those uh, wonderful distractions then sometimes I think I would just be totally focused on medicine um, which would not be good <laughs> for my overall 
spiritual health and physical health. Um, yeah, I hope that answers yeah. that question. <laughs> yeah, it does. I guess following on from that, is there any advice that you would have for managing work-life balance for someone who is single then, I guess? I know that hasn't been your experience, but I mean, as a student or before getting married or having kids, anything, I guess, to suggest there? Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I did experience that a little bit before I had, um, I mean, I got married in medical school, but um, before that, I think what I was saying about trying to prioritise going to church um, and just... I think doing things um, like I was also involved in a global health group at university and um, I used to teach English as a second language on a Saturday, like just different things as well to help you remember that medicine isn't the be all and end all because it's very good at consuming you. And um, and I think also in medicine, we always have these type A personalities where you always have to do everything perfectly. And I remember as, as, when I was still single and when I was at university, like if I didn't get my devotions and my prayer life exactly right, then I would feel like, uh, what's the point of this? I'm failing at this because you had that like ridiculous, you know, has, everything has to be perfect kind of thing, which is like, that's not what God asked for. He just asks that you come to him and he's a gracious and loving father um, who is willing to hear your prayers and your imperfect devotions. And so, if you have that sort of personality um, and um, just make sure um, that you are prioritizing those things, even if they're not perfect. And um, I think that will stand you in good stead um, as you yeah, continue your medical journey, because it's a terrible master um, when you don't have other things to help you balance and prioritize the rest of your life. And you can see that sometimes in your colleagues, um, who do have, you know, um, medicine as their all-consuming fire. And sometimes they can be great doctors but um, not very happy people. And I think they, they also notice that, um, like, colleagues and medical student um, peers can also notice when you um, have something else in your life that you are so passionate about, which is your Christian faith and how that grounds you and sometimes I was a person that people might come to um, to talk things over or for some advice or some perspective because they noticed that I had um, something else in my life that gave me perspective and, um, and through the grace of God, a bit of wisdom as well. And so I think you can, um, yeah, be that for your peers too. Mm, yeah, it's so good. I guess just to recap the things that you've said. So the first one was being intentional. The second one was being accountable, having sort of fellowship around you. Yeah. I guess leading to the third one being CMDFA. Yeah. Um, and then being open to not making work your spouse and everything. <laughs> the kind of opportunities that can arise from that. Mm -hmm. I guess um, coming back to the first point about being intentional, do you have any practical steps about how to be intentional? Because um, sometimes I think it can be hard to to know other than just kind of doing it. Is there anything that can trigger you to do it, I guess, in, in terms of making sure that they are priorities or how do you make them a priority in your life? Intentional in terms of um, like setting time for devotions or intentional yeah, in terms of your faith? Yeah, exactly. Whether it's devotion, like how do you fit the devotion time into your day or how do you... Um, do you still prioritise Sundays of having no study day? Do you also not work on Sundays or how does that look in your life? Yeah, um, so, yeah, I do still prioritise Sundays. So I'm fortunate at the moment where I'm, I'm working more part-time and I'm allowed to choose my days. So I don't work, um, I, yeah, try very hard not to work Saturday nights. I don't work any Sunday days or evenings and I just occasionally have to work Sunday nights, like starting a night shift. Um, so that's been great. And during internship and residency, I also found that most of the time I could swap out of a Sunday shift if I tried really hard because people tend to like Sunday shifts because it's a bit of extra pay. Um, so that was a, um, something that I always tried to do. And I tried to be part of my church in an active way as well, whether I was playing piano or singing or helping with um, other parts of the service. And so I guess that was my intentional way because um, I do notice that if I miss a Sunday, um, then I 
I really do feel like my um, my week and my Christian walk that week is compromised and I find that I in particular really need that grounding and that um, uh, that time with God and that time hearing from his word and from the minister to um, set me up for that week. And I definitely can think of times in my Christian life where I haven't been able to have that and just how out of kilter I have felt. Um, so I think, yeah, being intentional about that. And then um, probably just comes down to also what you fill your, fill your mind with. Um, so I'm not great at um, working through devotion books and um, working through passages of the Bible, but I really love listening to things. And so I try listening to scripture and I listen to lots and lots of podcasts as well. And again, just trying to um, make good choices about what I'm filling my mind with because um, sometimes I, I have uh, a lot of interest in podcasts and sometimes if I'm just spending that time listening to, I don't know, I really like American politics, for example, <laughs> but that's not um, filling my mind with um, yeah, things that are actually going to help me in my Christian walk. And I also notice when I'm like getting too far down that track and not listening to the Christian podcast that I usually listen to, that also has a flow and effect um, in my walk and in my faith. Um, and I, I just think that you have to be intentional um, because in medicine, you come across lots of different situations um, that can be challenging ethically and can be challenging spiritually and relationally. And if you're not um, in a good place with your Christian walk and then responding in the heat of the moment to those situations can be difficult. Um, and if you are filling your life with, um, with the scripture and um, having a personal relationship with God, and praying, um, then when you do have to face those situations, then the choices that you make in those situations become a lot easier um, because you uh, um, you feel more steadfast in your faith. Mm. Yeah, it's really good, Ducky. Um, I think we're sort of coming, coming to a time where we'll wrap up, but is there any sort of final thoughts that you have on balancing medicine and life and, and Christianity? Uh, I think, um, yeah, I guess I would just again plug trying to um, think through a lot of these things as you're a medical student and that CMDFA was really formative for me in that and I think it can help a lot of medical and dental students in that as well. So sometimes um, like you go to a whole CMDFA conference and you hear all these amazing talks but sometimes it's just like one interaction or one conversation with one person at one of those conferences that will go on to have like a defining um, uh, moment in your life or change in your career perspective. And um, so I think I would just encourage people where they have the opportunity to go to those things. Um, and especially when you have that opportunity as a medical student, not to pass those things up. Um, and yeah, I can just think of like different people that I've met. Um, like I met a doctor who worked in Alice Springs. I think it was at my um, second CMDFA conference. And then she was like, she was one of the people who was like, oh, you should just come to Alice Springs for internship. And I was like, yeah, no, I, I should, I could. I like, and um, <laughs> like having just one random conversation over um, morning tea sort of helped like, um to yeah um impact me and um you know I could very easily have not ever done that um and I think by being open to going to those conferences or having conversations with people or going to a CMDFA event um all of those different things had um yeah so many probably impacts that I can't even think of um throughout that have come back to help me throughout being a doctor thus far um yeah does that make sense no it's really good encouragement um thank you so much for your time tonight Taki I, I know you're very busy why don't I <laughs> pray for us and we'll wrap up thanks thank you. we thank you so much that you are good and we thank you for 
um, wisdom in how to best balance working and being a Christian and family life or single life or whatever outside of work and Christian life we have. We thank you that you are God of all and that we love you, God. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Ben. Thanks so much.